talked about economic interests influencing the course and I would say probable outcome of the war. And you also said that you did not accept any position in government following the transition. However, I assume that you had uh, close ears to this transition process. And given your background as a financial expert, according to reports that came in the media, there were some 12 or 30 million tons of iron ore, residual iron ore, left at the port in Buchanan. And the stories that we heard was that there was a race by model to take Buchanan, take control of the port, and probably at the time believing that, like in previous times, where warring factions had control of ports and they were at liberty to sell whatever resources they found at those ports, logs, rubber, and all what have you, believing that, that period may have afforded them the time. But this did not happen. And the transitional government came into being and the oil was still there. But that oil was sold. As a financial expert who has been following events, even following up to, up to present the uh, allocation of oil blocks, the awarding of concession agreements, how much was accrued from that sale? How much did government net? Did, how much did government receive into her coffers as a result of that iron ore sale today? Okay, uh, Brother John, I don't, I've, I've, I've never seen the contract. I've never seen the uh, bill of lading that would determine the uh, amount of tonnage that was shipped out. I, I, I haven't seen governments in terms of intake, in terms of how much came into government. So I really came back and gave you, you know, I, I can give you an informed opinion on it. Uh, my informed opinion is that uh, uh, Mr. Nat Barnes, okay, and the company is associated with had a contract with that, with the iron ore. Mr. Nat Na Barnes, yeah. who is who is a yeah, current ambassador, the yeah. ambassador to yeah. the United Nations. Yeah, yes. And the, another company came in because he was trying to explain to me that he had developed this mechanism to be able to load the ore. Because one of the challenges uh, in, in dealing with sh selling or shipping this ore will be the method of conveyance onto ore, an incoming ship. And he told me that he had, you know, and so he had had a company, and uh, you know, they had shipped one of, you know. So anyway, uh, when the transitional government came in, of uh, the company called Shandong Trading, okay, with some relationship to Mr. Haddad. John came, Haddad? Yeah, John Haddad. Uh, went and got, a, got the contract to uh, buy this ore. And I know there was a court battle between the Barnes Company and the Shandong. And ultimately, the Shandong people won, and they began to lift this ore. I gather from talking to people connected to this sale that uh, it was sold for about ten or eleven dollars a ton. When I had looked at buying that particular iron ore in 1996, just before April 6, when I was in the states, it was about 600,000 metric tons, and it had an Fe content averaging 60 to 64. Okay. And it's been sitting there since, uh, I believe, 1992 or 1990. Because I, I suppose it was uh, 1992 following yeah, the five, 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 octopus. Five, exactly. Yeah. So from what I've been gathering is that uh, this ore was sold and monies were not deposited into government revenue, but instead were deposited with Mr. Haddad. And Mr. Haddad was supposed to be uh, disbursing monies on behalf of the government based upon uh, written communication from the affected parties who are the Ministry of Alliance, Mines and Energy. 
I now know that well enough now from reading about it in the various papers around you and putting and connecting the dots. So it does appear from my estimation that the government did not get the correct price for the ore because at the time of the transaction, ore was between 45 to 50 dollars a ton, so there's a disparity of 30 dollars there. And I even understand that even with the low amount of money that was paid by, by a Shandong, yet there was, even though this, the, the, the ore, and it, I got this from the Panel of Express report, that even though the ore was sold as is, where is, but there were some provisions made in an amended clause there for water damage or moisture content and all of that. So that's what I know from the public record and from speaking to people connected with it. Now, that's something the court case been dragging along here for I don't know how long now. And uh, I see the parties that are involved, not in jail, not shackled. And I've heard nothing about a pending court case now since the first uh, Inkling was by the Justice Ministry, so, and it's been over a year, year and a half now. And I don't, I don't know what, what the status of, of that case is right now. And you say uh, Mr. Barnes uh, spoke to you that he had a company yeah. that had interest in uh, selling ore. Yeah, and they were, I'm telling you now that, they, that he, they had a contract and it was taken away from them. They went to court. And I even recently read, yeah, but, but John, I even recently read in one of these papers that there should have been an award to the company based upon some, some court case, because there was a court case against GOL or, or the Shandong, and there was some money damages. But these are all from the public record. So I'm not speaking of any secrets here, nothing I gather from talking to people in government, anything like that. I'm just talking what I know from reading the public record. Just to try to educate the public about, our, about that particular case. Yes, uh, I, I just want to ask, when you were told at the time, and being your colleague, no, 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 no. Ministers. This is no. This is way, way after I, I would left government. I'm talking about did it way, after, way almost the end of the transition. That's when he and I talk about the ore. So we we had I talk. We had not. We had no conversation about the ore. And I'm not even sure when his company got the ore. But I spoke to him. In fact, it was uh, uh, pretty much close to the elections when he when he and I spoke about that. So we never discussed it when I was minister. I never had anything to do with it. I know nothing about it. And I don't know how his company got it. So if you need to do a written communication to Mr. Barnes, you ask him uh, the details of his, because, but it, it's been very public that his company went to court for damages against some other company for taking an oil from his company. Okay, so don't put me in the mix here because, about it because Mr. Barnes and I spoke only after going toward the end of the transitional government, not when we were ministers. And you don't forget, Mr. Barnes had been out of government for a long time, prior to even uh, May, prior to May of uh, 2003, I think about a year, a year or two earlier, about a year earlier, he had been dismissed, so he had not been in government. So I'm assuming that Mr. Barnes went in this transaction, you know, after he was minister. I'm, I'm making that assumption on his behalf.